So now I'm going to reassemble this in detail, explain everything once again. So for the first step, we are going to reinstall the bearings onto the front of the motor shaft, and then we are going to install the chuck. So I'm going to put a little bit of lube here on the bearings. I have to say I'm actually surprised at the quality of this tool given the fact that I think I paid about $20 for it on sale at Princess Auto which is the equivalent of Harbor Freight. So now I've got the bearings lubricated. I'm going to slide on a sleeve and the front motor housing. Then I'm going to slide on the two bearings. Now that I've got the bearings in place, I'm going to thread on the chuck. And now what I'm going to do is install all of these pieces into the casing of the tool, or the housing of the tool. So now we have the veins installed into the rotor and now we are going to put this into the body of the tool. So now we have the on and off which was at the back so we're going to put it in through the front and this is probably going to take a little bit of tapping. That still has to go in a little further. You can tell it has to go in a little further because there's a gap between the body and the front part of the tool here. So we'll just continue tapping and then turning in until we get the black part to touch the red part. there probably about 20 thousandths about the width of a paper there so we're going to stop at that point and now I'm going to continue to assemble the tool from the back side now this is very important the position of the motor housing itself in relation to the case doesn't matter. The position of the rear motor housing in relation to the case doesn't matter. And the position of this rear plug, whatever it is, piece in relation to the case doesn't matter. But the position of these pieces in relation to one another has to be exactly on or the tool will not work properly and that's why we have this little pin that locks everything together so what I'm gonna try to do at least at first and maybe I'll give up and try something else I'm going to put these three pieces together with the locator pin in the hole Actually, I'll start with these two pieces. We've got the bearing on the outside, like that. We'll put a little drop of oil on that bearing. And now, again, this can go in there anyway, it doesn't matter but these pieces have to be lined up with each other. So I've slid that in and it went in a whole lot easier than it came out. 
which is good. It's fine by me. I'll put this last piece on. Continue sliding it together. At some point it's going to take a hammer to get this all the way in, I assume. We have to make very certain that all these pieces are lined up. So now that I've got it in that fur, I'm going to take my hammer and just give it a gentle tap. And now I need something to drive it in a little further. So we've got our special tool here, the socket. And we're going to go down to the concrete floor once again to make this easier on ourselves. Okay, so we've got our socket. We've got the body of our tool. We're going to place the end of the collet chuck on the floor. And the socket centered on the back of the motor. Now we're going to gently at first tap on it until we get it recessed some inside. See, now that we have it kind of inside and we're sure we're not beating on the body of the tool, we can now hammer on it a little bit more aggressively. You want to pay attention to the sound and we will hear when everything seats together, the sound will change. Just keep listening to the sound. Right there. That is the sound that it makes now that everything's locked together. Okay, so we're back on the bench and we've got the motor all reassembled. Everything's turning nice and smooth. All right, now that we have all the components inserted into the case of the tool, we just need to insert this brass piece and thread the back slash valve onto the tool. Now we'll use the spanner wrench from before on the front body of the tool and the wrench on the back and snug it together. It doesn't have to be terribly tight. Now we reinsert this sleeve and tighten that up. Thread the air hose back on, and then we'll be ready to test it. This is the moment of truth. I'm not going to edit this out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. All right, let's see what happens here. So if you noticed when I first turned it on, it made a funny noise. That was basically the tool spitting out a bit of oil. So now that it's kind of displaced some of that oil, it's working. And it seems to be working fine. We'll put a tool in it and see if we can cut something. Let's get that piece of plastic and see if it still works.
All right, we have a tool installed. I'll show you guys now what I meant about the torque. If I hold my fingers on here and turn it on, very easy for me to hold it back. I can hold it just with the tips of my fingers. All right, folks, as AVE would say, safety squints engaged. This company calls it an air micro grinder and they claim 54,000 RPM at 90 PSI. And if you have a little uh, oilless air compressor, it's not going to run this. Um, 90 PSI is uh, very deceptive. A lot of people are probably thinking, well, my air compressor goes to 120 PSI. Well, this 90 PSI rating is at about 9 cubic feet per minute. So it takes a fairly serious air compressor to be able to produce enough airflow for one of these things. Despite being tiny in size, they consume a large amount of air, and that is partly due to the fact that they aren't terribly efficient, but it's also just because they turn at 50,000 RPM and uh, they eat up a lot of air. This video was done based on a request from one of my subscribers. I wanted to make this a fairly quick video because I already have three other Airtool videos, uh, but if you do have a question, feel free to ask it in the comments. If you found this video informative, or if you just found it entertaining and you want to check out more videos like this, I do have three other Airtool videos. So feel free to check them out. I will leave the links in the description of this video. If you have any questions about this particular tool or any other tool, feel free to ask and I will do my best to answer. That is the end of the video for today and I will see you guys next time.